Good morning. Good to see everyone here this morning. Before we begin our worship service to our Heavenly Father, I do have just a few announcements that I need to make. Uh, it's good to see everyone here, and I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're visiting with us, uh, we thank you for being with us, and we hope you can come back and be with us again. Uh, there's uh, lots of people that's out today. I guess there's a lot of people traveling, so let's remember them in our prayers. Uh, I know we have a, a it's sort of low this morning, but, but we're just thankful that we're all here today. Uh, but anyway, let's remember all those that are not here. If you haven't already picked up a bulletin, please please, uh, please, please pick up a bulletin. It's out there on the table in the foyer. Uh, lots of things in, in, in the bulletin that we don't announce, but you're from the pulpit, so please pick up a bulletin and read it, and if you can, look at it every morning and every evening, every bedtime, and, uh, and pray for all the ones that are sick. Uh, no, I was told that this morning, Deborah Clark, she was having the feeding tube put back in, but she couldn't. Well, they couldn't. They couldn't do the feeding to you. Uh, she has a, a have her throat was sore and esophagus, and so they just couldn't go in there and uh, give her another feeding to you. And uh, that feeding to feeding to you, that's what's keeping her alive right now. That feeding to you. And so we hope, hopefully we pray that, uh, that she'll get over all that uh, sick of sickness and. and uh, esophagus and all that where they can do uh, the feeding tube again. Uh, also, uh, there's a car accident uh, this, this last Thursday. Uh, John Mosley, uh, he uh, had a serious wreck, but he is in the hospital, I think, in Spartanburg. So let's remember John Mosley. Uh, a lot of people are traveling. Uh, just remember all those people are traveling that they will. Uh, yeah, I know, I know about the, the highways are just full of people. I think they're still um, on the news that they have more people now than they've ever had flying and riding in cars and driving cars. And so it, it's bad. You know. I know there's a lot of wrecks. People like that leaving their, uh, that, that are dying and getting in the hospital, so let's remember all of them if we can. And uh, Deborah Clark, she has, we'll have that surgery on November the 25th, so now I don't know when they're going to have that. So let's remember Deborah. <coughs> And let's also remember Ruth, <coughs> excuse me, and Rick. And 
Jesus. Remember all the ones that are in the bulletin. Uh, in our worship this morning, uh, Joy Foster will lead us in our song service. I would be leaving us in opening prayer. Uh, Paul Luttrell will have the closing prayer. And Ray Moore will have our scripture reading. Uh, Denny Shrine will bring our search of uh, uh, the words today. But anyway, uh, that's all I have announcements this morning. But before we go into our worship service, does anyone ever have, does anyone have anything else to say? Yes. Yes, Brian was able to take leave. He's in Colorado now uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. He should be here until the 3rd of December. Now, Brian, he's, uh, he's <coughs> excuse me. He's going to be here when? He's here now. He's in Colorado now. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. We're thankful for that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Let us know. If there's nothing else, let's go ahead and bow. And, uh, our most gracious and almighty Heavenly Father, we come to thee and we come, Father, with, with thee. Father, we're just so thankful that uh, you love us so much and Jesus loved us so much that he died on that cross. We're so thankful, Father, that we have a Bible that we can read it and study it and know exactly how to live here upon this earth and how to get from here to heaven Father, someday, Father. Father, we pray that you'll help us all uh, talk to others uh, about the gospel. We have lots and I mean, there's just many and many, lots of people out there think they're saved. And we know that they're probably not saved. And uh, some of them just want to, uh, they, they, they think they're right, but they, they're just not reading, reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Father, we pray that you'll help us to get to these ones that are think, uh, think, well, thinking they're truly uh, truth and they're not. Father, help us all to, to help our loved ones and our friends, our families, people that we work with. Help us to remember, Father, everyone that uh, that's, have not obeyed the gospel. Father, help us to do whatever we can to uh, lead them to Jesus before it's too late. Father, we're so thankful for our, our, our families and our, our jobs and our homes and our incomes we're so thankful father for these things and we know father that you give us all the good things that we need and we're so thankful for that father keep us uh we help us father to, to uh keep each one of us in our prayers father each and every day we know when uh, we don't never know when our time is coming father so just uh, help us to father realize all this that uh, we can pray for one another that we'll do everything we can to make sure that we're truly faithful and that we can have that heaven in, in you, Father. When, 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 we are, uh, when we do pass on, Father, we can have that home in heaven. Father, we're so truthful, uh, thankful for everything. We, we pray for Deborah. We pray, Father, that she'll... Get over all this uh, soft cuffs in her throat, or they can do the uh, surgery on the uh, food tube. Uh, we're so thankful. Just pray for. We pray for her, Father, that everything work good for her, so she can be. Uh, uh, so she can be good. Uh, uh, be back again and, and worship Father. I know she wants. I know her and Ruth and Rick, all three. They want to be here every time they, the doors are open. And we know that there are lots of others that want to have them have be here, be here all the time. But sometimes we just can't do that, Father. So just please, uh, please uh, watch over us, Father. Help us to do what we can to help others. We pray that you'll be with Brother Joel as he leads us in these songs. Help us to all sing to the best of our ability. We pray, Father, that uh, you be with uh, the preacher, Dennis, as he brings the sermon, Father. We pray that he'll say the things that are that are truthful in, in the Bible and that we can watch over us and that we can realize the, the truth 
And we know, Father, that uh, truth said the, the Bible is a, a truth, you know, in the, is in the Bible. So we can know the truth, and the truth will set us free, Father. We help us to do these things, Father. Uh, we know sometimes, Father, we just don't know the words to say, uh, especially me. Uh, the words don't come to me like they used to. But just forgive us, Father, the, the ways that we uh, that we're not um, that we're doing that we shouldn't be. Father, watch over us, take care of us, continue to be with everyone, Father, especially the uh, church here at Malden and throughout the world, Father. Watch over us and, and help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Morning. Nine three. Nine three. <clears throat> Thank you. 
This morning we take the bread and the fruit of the vine, which represents Jesus' body, body and blood that was hung up on that cruel cross. He done this for each and every one of us. If you would, I'd like to read from this hymn number 330, if you'd like to read along with me. It says, On this Lord's day we assemble round the table of the Lord. Happy hearts are made to tremble when we hear his blessed word. We recall his broken body as we look upon this bread. Give you thanks to bite and eat it in my memory, he said. And this crimson cup reminds us of that dreadful scene a long, long ago when he died in pain and agony. There his blood was made to flow. There in agony he suffered on the cross for you and me. Now upon the throne he resigned, blessed Lamb of Calvary. Thanks to God for such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for this exalted favor, blessed memorial of, the love, of his love. Now we have a prayer for our prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your son and for that sacrifice he made on our behalf. There is no way that we could repay that debt ever. And we're just thankful, Lord, that as we gather around this, this memorial table this morning and, and participate in this feast, and we ask your blessings now on this bread that represents the body of your Son who allowed it to be hung on that cross in our stead. In your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll continue prayer for the fruit of the vine. Our kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to take this, the fruit of the vine. 
which represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we partake of this in a manner pleasing to the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is giving back to the Lord if He's blessed each and every one of us with. If you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. And it reads Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. When I have a prayer for us. Oh. Yes, God. Yeah, Father, it makes me up to our staff homes. Your yeah, word. Mm-hmm. Get back to what portion. I just thought that uh, it's basic. This may be used. Oh, if I fall, let us share that hospitality. And have many gifts play for me. Six, one, four. Six, one, four. Oh. Uh-huh.
before Brother James comes, speaks to us. 756. 756. It's convenient we ask you to stand. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day that will be. scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to faithful entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. <coughs> what a time we have had these last few months. We wonder sometimes if we're going to have enough gas to get to work or be able to pay the mortgage or the rent. Maybe have enough for groceries. Wonder if we're going to be able to heat our homes. We've had to make an awful lot of changes in the way we live. top of all that we have all this unrest in the world and there are even those who believe that we are headed into a world war. We are confronted with uncertainty and unprecedented change every single day. We search for security. We search for stability. We want peace. We want hope, but it seems to elude us. We just long for someone to tell us that everything is going to be okay. That all these things are going to correct itself. But we need to listen to this, that God longs to do that for us. God wants to wrap his arms around us like we wrap our arms around our children. He wants to speak to us the words of hope and peace and love. 
there are a couple of New Testament letters written to address such times of uncertainty. The letters that Peter write are two of those. First Peter chapter 4 in verses 7 all the way through verse 19. We're going to start here verses 12 and 13. <clears throat> Peter said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's suffering, that you may rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Now we'll go to verses 7 to 11. It leads up to that statement. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. And that brings us to 19. Verse 19, Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. You know, we often hear it said that attitude is everything. <clears throat> that we can accomplish an awful lot with the proper attitude, but during these times, it seems like we throw attitude out the window. What should our attitude be during these times? And that's why I like to, to come to Peter's letters, because he does give us a lot to think about, a lot of ways in order to be able to put ourselves in the right frame of mind, to be able to overcome these times. And the first thing that Peter reminds us to do is to maintain sound judgment. The American Standard uses the term sober-minded. In other words, we are to keep a clear head. We are to understand what is important and what isn't. It was Paul who wrote in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18, As we look not on the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, and the things that are unseen are eternal. Chapter 2 of 2 Peter tells us that there's a new world coming. That everything that we have here in this earth, everything that we enjoy, will be gone. That there's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. And the things that seem so important to us today will not be useful in God's new world. Why it is important for us to focus our attention on the things that are not seen. Focus our attention on the knowledge and word of God. To maintain our faith, our hope, our love, our joy, our peace. And have that heartfelt holiness. But what are we focused on today? Are we spending our time, our treasure, our talent, our energy on the things that we see? Or are we focusing them on the unseen? Now this is the time of the year where things get extremely hectic. If 
we don't write it down, we're going to forget it. We cram so much in a few short weeks. But guess what? When this world ends, there will not be any moving vans sent to take our belongings with us. It's going to be gone. We need to practice self-control. I know it's a lot easier said than done. Everything that we face each and every day tugs at our self-control. If you commute every morning to work, you're being tugged. Self-control is spread to the very limit, almost as stretched as a rubber band at its breaking point. But that word self-control means to have a wholehearted or single-mindedness. It is the opposite of being drunk or divided in mind. We go back to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Peter says that we are to abstain from the passions of the flesh. And that message that Peter sends is extremely clear. To stay away from anything that keeps us from exercising proper judgment and self-control. Now we could list a ton of things to put here, but I don't think it's necessary. First Peter 5 and verse 8 tells us why all this is necessary. Because our adversary, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he can devour. And it is so important that we do not allow him access to our souls. We can't let him control our attitudes during the times that we are experiencing today. What is the most important thing that we can do? during these difficult times. For many, they thought that November 7th was going to solve all our problems. That we were going to put the right politicians in place and everything is going to be a utopia. It's one of the biggest fallacies in this world. That man can solve our problems. The most important thing that we can do during times like this is to develop our prayer life. We must have an active prayer life. When we disconnect tomorrow from today, it throws us to our knees in prayer. When we can't see tomorrow, when we can't see the future, we become anxious. We get upset. Why does it seem that we wait until we are in our twilight years, the end of our lives, to realize just how important prayer is? For those who are living in those twilight years, realize how much uncertainty there is in it. Living to the end, calls for a lot of prayers. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus taught persistence prayer. In Luke 21, verse 36, it says to pray always. Ephesians 6, verse 18, pray for all occasions. Romans 12, verse 12, be constant in prayer. James 5, verses 13 through 18, it says that if we're suffering, if we're sick, if we're caught up in sin, that we're to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8 tells us, pray without ceasing. And you might think, I'm not old. I got all the time in the world. You know, we equate life as the four seasons of our year. Spring. Summer, fall, winter. 
guess what? People die in the spring. They die in the beginnings of their life as well as they die best part of their lives and in the fall. We never know when the end is coming. In Paul's two letters to the church of Thessalonica, he had to correct their thinking on the second coming of Christ. And at the conclusion of those letters, he said to pray always. We never know. We never know. God created us for relationships. God wants us to love one another deeply. That is what earnest love is. You see, our success in life isn't determined by physical things. It is determined rather by the relationship with God and our love for one another. That word earnest that we find in 1 Peter 4 and verse 8, some other translations use the word fervent. It comes from the same Greek word, but it was used to describe an athlete who strains every muscle, who uses every bit of his ability to reach the finish line. He gives it everything he has. That is the reason Peter uses that word here. Loving one another deeply earnestly giving our relationships with others with every fiber of our being. Peter goes on to say that this kind of love covers a multitude of sins, but it also keeps a multitude of sins from occurring in the first place. You you know, biblical hospitality is more than just inviting someone to your home for a meal or entertaining someone. Biblical hospitality has to do with preferring one another over self, placing others before self, being sensitive to others' needs, serving others with the blessings that God has given us. Webster's gives us a pretty good idea of what it truly means. Being cordial, making others feel welcome, entertaining guests or strangers, being of service to others, given to generosity. But for Peter, that language also means loving strangers. In Romans 12, verse 13, Paul describes it as sharing with the saints who are in need. Hebrews 13, in verse 2, it tells us not to neglect showing hospitality to strangers as some have entertained angels unaware. Remembering those in prison. Remembering those who are mistreated. But why is this so important to us? What benefit does hospitality have? It helps us take our minds off ourselves. It lets us be mindful of others, helping others and putting their interests ahead of our own. It does away with this, oh, woe is me syndrome. Because we no longer feel it. us from grumbling. Every morning we have a choice. We can get up, we can thank God for our blessings, or we can grumble and complain. What sets the tone for our day? Thankfulness or ingratitude? Joy 
or grumbling? God hates grumbling. God destroyed many Israelites in the wilderness because they grumbled. They complained. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 4, verse 13, to rejoice in so far as we share in Christ's suffering. You know, it's very easy to be led astray during times like this. Sometimes we think that God does not care for us, that God is too harsh to allow us to suffer that because we're his, we should be doing great, regardless of what everyone else is facing. But it only works if we look at the sound doctrine. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God, 1 Peter 4, 11. I like the King James rendition better. If any man speak, let him speak as oracles of God. We do not have in the matters of religion the right to speak anything else. <coughs> Second Timothy 4 and verse 3, the verse that I couldn't remember in Bible class. Paul tells us that there's going to come a time People are going to put up with sound doctrine, but they're going to follow those truths, false truths that suit their desires. They're going to listen to those who will say what they want to hear. They're going to turn away from the truth. That's how we kind of get into these things. We allow other people to sway us in one way, shape, or form whether it's opinion or deed. Same thing happens in religion. Paul told Titus in Titus chapter 1, verse 9, that we must hold on to that trustworthy message that it has been taught so that we can encourage others in the truth and we can refute those who oppose it. And of course, our go-to Jude 3, Oh, to earnestly contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered and trusted to the saints. These times are certainly a challenge for us all. That's why we end with verse 19 of 1 Peter 4. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. We commit ourselves to God. Let's continue to do the good that we know to do. We are going to make it. We're going to come out on the other side beaten and bruised. <laughs> But we're not going to be broken. As long as we trust God for today and for tomorrow. Our attitudes are never going to change unless we make the choice to change our attitudes. Things that Peter wrote here, First Peter 4, can help us get over these times. We don't have to worry about tomorrow because we know that God is already there before we arrive. Being here for one another will help us get through all these difficult times. God will never give us more than we can make. Ever. We just have to have the right attitudes and thinking in those ways. If you are not a child of God, 
where do you go for help in these times of need? There is one you can go to. But it requires something on your part. It requires obedience to the gospel. <coughs> Through repentance and confession and New Testament baptism, you can open up that line of communication with God. He will help you to overcome the things you face in this life. Give you a new start. A sinless start. One that you won't keep spotless, but the one that you can always have those stained clothes cleansed. We want to give you that opportunity this morning. And if you are a child of God, and if you need our prayers for whatever reason, we want to give you the opportunity also as together we stand and we sing. <laughs> Careless soul, while where you linger, wandering from the fold of God, hear you not the invitation of prepare to meet thy God. dismissed with prayer in just a moment and if possible if everyone would just sit for just a moment after we're done with our closing prayer brother paul let us pray our father and god in heaven come to thee in prayer at this time at the close of this lesson that we have listened to these passages of humility and care and helping others and in so doing the trials we face encourages our humility before you, which you do so appreciate in your creation. Father, thank you for the opportunities we have to be together, for the sacrifice of your Son who made it possible that we may have eternal life, should we keep the faith and continue trying to live the Christian life as best we can. Go with us as we leave this place. Keep us safe. Be with those mentioned today in the auditorium and those in the bulletin, that those having physical problems, pray that they may be healed, that it may be thy will, 
for that to be so, and may return to us. And Father, we pray that those here tonight and today may return to us to this meeting again this evening. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.